When did the dinosaurs arise on Earth? What were some of the first dinosaurs? How and where did they live? Join us as we discover the history of the first of the mightiest beasts the Earth has ever known, the dinosaurs. Tyrannosaurus Rex Tyrannosauridae, meaning tyrant lizard forms, is the name of a group of closely related coleosaurian theropod dinosaurs. Different kinds of animals belong to them, including more basal relatives, but also the most famous Tyrannosaurus Rex, which came much later. Tyrannosaurs lived on the Laurasian supercontinent, beginning in the Jurassic times, between 167 and 66 million years ago. Towards the end of the Cretaceous period, they were the most dangerous and dominant meat-eaters in West North America, Europe, and Asia ever to exist. Some fragments of the skeletons that had been found in South America and Australia could possibly be assigned to Tyrannosaurus as well. Fossil collection shows that Tyrannosaurus evolved for over 100 million years. They had characteristic skeletal features, especially the recognizable skull and pelvis. At the beginning of their existence, Tyrannosaurids were small in size, with long three-fingered forelimbs. By the late Cretaceous, the species had become almost indistinguishable from the others. They were much larger than most other theropods. Their skulls were huge and had a box-like shape. Tyrannosaurus had big eyes and a well-developed sense of smell. They had thicker necks with strong muscles to support and move the weight of the head. The powerful jaws were armed with huge teeth, able to deliver a powerful bite. The teeth had saw-like edges at the back and front, leaving distinctive puncture marks in the bones of prey, such as the horned dinosaur, Triceratops. The body was shorter, with smaller forearms that only had two digits. Big holes between the bones helped to reduce its weight. The forelimbs seemed to be smaller, but actually were a man's length. Massive legs bore its weight on three large, bird-like clawed toes. It is still unknown if all Tyrannosaurs had feathers. So far, only two species fossils were found with them. Some of the Tyrannosaurids had prominent bony crests on their skulls in all shapes and sizes. These have sparked controversy about whether Tyrannosaurids showed sexual differences, perhaps with females being larger than males. And then later came the king of the lizards, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The first nearly complete skeleton of Tyrannosaurus Rex was discovered and excavated in 1902 in Hell Creek, Montana, USA by Barnum Brown. He was an American paleontologist who at the time led the expedition funded by the American Museum of Natural History. The fossil hunters used dynamite to blow up the rock around Big Dry Creek Stream. They worked in heavy conditions. It was very hot, with the temperatures reaching up to 43.3 Celsius or 110 Fahrenheit, and had no tents or other places to hide from the sun. They managed to uncover a total of three T-Rex individuals, including two nearly complete skeletons. One of the skeletons is displayed in the American Museum of Natural History in the Hall of Saurasuchian Dinosaurs. Originally, the specimen was arranged in a standing upright position, However, 
it was changed by the scientists into what they thought was more accurately a stalking position. With its head low, tail extended, and one foot slightly raised. The first documented remains of Tyrannosaurus rex made Brown one of the most famous fossil hunters of his time. Sponsored by the American Museum of Natural History, he was arranging purchases and collection of anything that had a possible scientific value. Due to his incredible work in the paleontological field, Brown gained a nickname of Mr. Bones. T-Rex finally appeared during the Maastrichtian stage of the late Cretaceous period, about two million years before they all went extinct. The average life of T-Rex was about 28 years. Some estimates claim that billions of T-Rexes roamed the Earth during their reign. They lived in the western part of America, including Montana and Wyoming. The current dry and grassy landscape was likely to be open woodland and more of a Louisiana floodplain when T-Rex walked the Earth. It was warmer than it is now. Lots of flowering plants were flourishing, and T-Rex lived in a diverse animal community, including many kinds of dinosaurs, mammals, and insects. Osborne named Tyrannosaurus rex in 1905. The name was derived from the Greek for tyrant lizard and rex, meaning king in Latin, the king of the tyrant lizards. Its cousins included Albertosaurus and Electrosaurus. Scientists had found about 20 skeletons of Tyrannosaurus rex. They are mainly partial, but one specimen found is almost complete and the most interesting too. It was named Dueling Dinosaurs, an adolescent preserved entangled with a Triceratops. In comparison to an elephant, Tyrannosaurus rex was about 40 feet or 12 meters long, about two times longer than a modern elephant. Its height reached almost 12 feet or over three and a half meters, making T-Rex slightly taller than an African bush elephant. If the estimated dinosaur's weight was more than eight tons, then that would make it twice as heavy as an elephant. Tyrannosaurus rex had a stiff, pointed tail which wagged from side to side when running. This was supposed to help angular momentum to counterbalance for its gigantic head, for agility, and for making quick turns. The skin was more of a leathery type and rather scaly. T-Rex had two fingered hands on small but strong arms. When Brown found a pair of arms, he thought that they were too small to be part of a T-Rex skeleton. There are many theories on why T-Rex has such small arms and what they were used for. Henry Osborne was a paleontologist who described and named T-Rex. He came up with an idea that the short arms might have been used in copulation. The dinosaur, supposed to place the forelimbs on the female to hold her in place. However, Osborne didn't provide any evidence to prove his hypothesis. Kevin Padian observed that the T-Rex's arms were too short to go around another T-Rex and were not strong enough to keep control over the mate. Over the years, more explanations were presented, and these include the T-Rex using its short arms for signaling to other T-Rexes to allow the individual to get up from the ground, hold down prey, or even pushing over a sleeping Triceratops at night. Tyrannosaurus rex walked on its hind limbs. The legs were around 11 feet or 3.35 meters long. Also, their feet were quite large, about 3.3 feet or 1 meter long. 
The prints left by T-Rex measured about 1.55 feet or 46 centimeters long. It proves that only its toes touch the ground. A T-Rex foot fossil found in South Dakota was 25 inches or 63.5 centimeters high and nearly 2 feet or 61 centimeters wide. Its foot looks very similar to a chicken's. It is one of the many resemblances between theropod dinosaurs and modern birds. The legs had to be built with strong and powerful muscles to bear its heavy weight. They could only run up to 12 miles an hour. T-Rex's skull is short and deep, 3 to 4 inches or 8 centimeters thick, which is sturdier when compared with that of other big meat eaters. The skull itself is up to 5 feet or 1.52 meters in length. Its neck is thick and muscular and supported by short, wide vertebra to enable holding and turning its heavy head. Scientists compared T. rex brain casts to the brains of its closest living relatives, the birds and crocodilians, and came up with the assumption the species had excellent senses. It had great vision. T. rex could see far into the distance thanks to the forward-facing big eyes. The eyes are positioned so that they can give a stereoscopic view forward. It also had very good hearing and sense of smell. The jaw was four foot or 1.2 meters long. The lower jaw bones had some flexibility. The dinosaur had 50 to 60 thick conical serrated teeth. They ranged in size and could be as small as 3 to 6 inches or 8 to 16 centimeters long and about 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters wide. Although some fossils were found with teeth reaching up to 13 inches or 33 centimeters in length, an adult individual had a variety of sizes of teeth in their jaws at any one time and could grow teeth back. It took T. rex about two years to replace a broken or old tooth. The replacement tooth grew inside the jaw alongside the root of the current tooth on the tongue side of the jaw. The teeth at the front were D-shaped and were suitable for gripping prey. Those at the back were thin blades, built for shearing meat. Scientists carried out a lot of research and measurements of T. rex's jaws and teeth. They suspected that they could crunch through bones. The largest discovery of T. rex fossils shows some bites of bones in their excrement. The powerful jaws and teeth could employ up to six tons of pressure and could destroy a car cutting it in half with just one bite. It proves that they were designed for bone crunching. T-Rex could eat up to 500 pounds or 230 kilograms of meat and bones in one bite. But how much would a six-ton T-Rex need to eat per day? Let's compare it again to an elephant whose weight is between two to seven tons. An African bush elephant needs around 70,000 calories a day. Some estimates state the T-Rex would need about 140 kilograms of meat a day. So what was T-Rex's favorite diet? It would probably be going after herds of horned and duck-billed dinosaurs, but it was also an opportunist and like most predators, they would eat any available food, such as carcasses. Sometimes they even ate one another, if there was nothing else that they could catch to eat. If Tyrannosaurus rex spotted prey, they would have moved in an attacking position for the kill, holding the lower jaw open. T-Rex could bite its prey so hard that its teeth would immediately crush through bones. No other animal, either extinct or alive, 
could bite with a force of 34,000 newtons. A car in an accident has the same force power. A small trophy in a T-Rex mouth could have been shaken to death. The dinosaur could use a different technique when attacking a larger victim. It could make use of its huge feet and claws to hold the prey still. Once its prey collapsed from blood loss, it would grip its neck or flank between its teeth, then jerk its head back, tearing out huge chunks of meat. According to scientists from the American Museum of Natural History, a Tyrannosaurus rex hatchling would most likely be covered in fluff. This assumption is based on observations and comparisons of T. rex hatchlings to big birds such as ostriches or emus. Once hatched, they would have been of the size of a chicken or small turkey. It is also believed that a baby T. rex had very different features to that of an adult T. rex. For example, their hands were slightly longer while at the juvenile age. It is because the hands were not growing as fast as the rest of the body into their adulthood. T. rex juveniles had slim and lightweight bodies with long legs, which helped them to be fast and nimble when trying to catch prey or avoid its predators. They all had lighter skulls and small but sharp bird-like teeth that were better for snatching small prey than crushing through large bones. Almost all part of T. rex baby or juvenile bodies were covered in feathers, probably to keep them warm, mask them, for species identification or for display. Just imagine a human two to five year old child gains about four to five pounds or two kilograms per year. The T. rex individual grew much bigger and much faster than humans, gaining the same weight, but in just one day. Although there are fossils of some larger species than the T. rex, such as Giganotosaurus, T. rex is still recognized as one of the world's most beautiful, powerful, and ferocious predators of all time. These videos take a very long time to create. If you would like to support the channel and assist in improving it, then do please subscribe and give us a like, and consider joining our Patreon. Links in the description.